Using VirtualBox is almost the same as using a standalone PC with an operating system already installed, but with a few additions. Rather than running through on how each of these settings affect the performance of the virtual machines, we shall take a practical example on how to network two virtual computers together. We have no intentions on explaining in depth how to network computers as it is beyond the scope of this course, but we shall use this example to show how flexible this piece of software is. First we need to create a second guest and we could install another copy or use a feature called cloning within VirtualBox. Check that the guest that you want to copy or clone is highlighted. In our example we have only one other computer, guest01. From machine click on clone. You will be asked for a suitable name. In our example we have chosen to call it Windows 7 guest02. Next you will be prompted to choose between a full clone or linked clone. In our example we want this to be a clone of guest01 and not be linked in any way. So we simply click on clone. This process can take some time so here we have speeded it up. We now have two guests running Windows 7, each with their own settings that can be changed. Here we shall start both guests. Once started we can move them, resize them and maximize them as we would with a normal window. And with windows we can also close them. If we click on the X in the top right hand corner we shall be given three options. Save the machine state. This is useful if you are setting up several guests and you need to save virtual box at a particular point. So you can return to it later and pick up at that point without losing any data or settings. Send the shutdown signal. This is the same signal that is sent when you click on start then shut down. And the final option is like removing the power from the computer so any unsaved data will be lost. Further, a message will be displayed when the virtual machine is restarted that Windows did not shut down correctly and you have the option at that point to restart in safe mode. We shall cancel this and return the window to its original size. Here we shall size both windows to about the same size. Since we cloned the first guest, all the settings have remained identical, including the name of the computers. We can check this by right clicking on computer, then properties. As we can see here, both are called Dave PC. Within a network, no two computers can have the same name. So here, we could just rename one, but in our example, we shall call them Guest01 and Guest02. To do this, we click on Change Settings. Then Change. Highlight the old name, then change it to our new name. Click on OK when the message you will need to restart the computer for this to take effect. Click on Close then Restart Now. We shall now repeat this for our other guest. We can see as we do the first guest is already restarting. This is where our extra memory in the host will come into play. The more guests you have running the slower the host will be. Once both guests have restarted, we can check that the names have taken effect. So we click on Start, right click on Computer, then Properties. 
likewise with Gesto 2. And here we can see in both instances this has taken effect. VirtualBox even allows the guests in their network default settings to access the internet through the host. This is handy should you wish to update both of the guests. The virtual box setting for this is called NAT or Network Address Translation. This may seem complicated and the process is, but it simply means that it takes one network address and converts it to another. We are not right now concerned about this since this is covered in our next course. All we are trying to demonstrate here is how flexible virtual box is. Our next step is to change the network adapter from NAT or NAT in both guests, so they can communicate with each other and not with the host. After shutting both guests down, we can access the setting of the first guest. Here we can see attached to settings is NAT or Network Address Translation. Click on the selector to the right of this, it can be changed to Internal Network. Bear in mind that this means Intel network of our guest. Now we have to choose a network adapter or type of adapter. We can choose Intel Pro 1000MT Desktop. Notice here the MAC address. Every network adapter that is made has a unique MAC address and is used exclusively throughout networking. The MAC address is fixed and no other device on a network can use this number. Also here we can choose to have a cable connected, as you would do in a wide network. We need to repeat this for the other guests. So we select guest door 2, then settings, network, select Intel network, advanced and change adapter type to Intel Pro 1000 MT desktop. It is possible for VirtualBox to duplicate a MAC address, although in reality this could never happen. We have to remember that the network adapter is only virtual, so we can, if need be, change it. If this is the first time you have set the network adapters in VirtualBox, you should check that the other guest MAC address is different before continuing. Now we shall boot both guests. Notice before we begin, this icon has an exclamation mark. This is something we need to recognize, since Windows is telling us we have a problem with the network. In this instance, it indicates a problem with the internet connection. Let's try and access the internet through the guests, like we did before. After a short delay, the message Internet Explorer cannot display the web page. The reason for this is we are no longer using NAT, so these two guests are no longer connected to the host. Now we shall try and access the network between guest O1 and O2. Notice the message Network Discovery and File Sharing are turned off. If we click on this, it will automatically reset the Network Discovery settings. We should close this and set them manually. To do this, we navigate through Control Panel, then View Network Status and Tasks. Change Advanced Sharing Settings. Now we have to turn on the Network Discovery. Turn on File on Printer Sharing. Turn on Sharing so anyone with network access 
can read and write files in the public folders. And turn off password protected sharing. Finally, save changes. Networking is normally a two-way thing, so we need to do the same to the other guest. We should point out that we have opened up this network without any real protection, so it would be possible to be accessed by almost anyone. This is not the best policy, but remember we are demonstrating just some of the features of VirtualBox. Now we shall try and access the network as we did before. Here we can see guest or two and another guest called VBOX SVR and we shall return to this soon. Likewise on guest or two we can see guest or one and also VBOX SVR. In some instances you may want to send information to or from the host to one or more guests. We can do this using the shared folder. First you will need to create a folder on the host PC. This will become our sharing point. In our example it will reside on the C drive and it will be called host folder. And will be referred to as the network drive in virtual box. On the bottom of the guest window you will find a folder and if we right click on it it will have the option called shared folders. Here we can select machine folders then click on add. If we know the path then we can type this in or click on the selector to the right of this and select other. Now we can browse for our folders. Computer local disk C, then host folder, OK when we have found it, then OK again. Now we can map this network drive, click on start, then right click on computer. From the drop down menu, click on map network drive, click on browse. Our network drive can be found in VBOX SVR, and here it is. We just need to select it, click on OK, then finish. This is then a direct link between our guests and host. We can see an example of this if we create a folder in here called created by guest or two. Now if we access the host, navigate to this folder, We can find it here. This is it for VirtualBox, a very versatile piece of software. There are many tutorials on the internet on how to use it. We have only just shown you here the very basics. You should use it to see the differences in between the operating systems, how to access certain features within the operating systems and how they behave.